For as long as I've been writing about the Middle East, war, civil strife, and dictatorship have been endemic. Mother of All Pigs is my way of pushing back. The novel draws on elements of family memoir, my uncle once raised pigs in the mountains of Jordan, I grew up in Ohio, and my mother, a Filipino psychologist, was the only foreigner in our extended Arab American family. The story has been amplified, informed, even emboldened by over 25 years of reporting and editing from the region, during which I covered a wide range of subjects from Syria's racy lingerie culture to water as occupation in Israel-Palestine. In the novel, I wanted to show the people, rich culture, and black humor that exists on the periphery of violence. Mother of All Pigs tells the story of the Sabas household and three generations of women. Mother Fadma, who watched most of her and her sister's children emigrate abroad. Samira, Fadma's only remaining daughter, and her stepson's unsatisfied wife, Layla. Fadma's stepson, Hussein, has a thriving new business at exactly the wrong time with her brother, Abu Zatar, a corrupt black marketeer. With each passing day, she became more agitated. Najla had given Aljid six healthy sons, one right after the other. Whenever Fadma glimpsed the brood from her hiding place behind the curtain in the store, her eyes filled with tears. She could never replace their dead mother, her beloved sister. Fadma sank deeper into depression. Even in marriage, all she could expect were the morsels from someone else's table. Debilitated and listless, she moped around her brother's house. One day, a troop of clowns in faded Harlequin costumes invaded the village and advertised their one and only performance with the nasal whine of a Zerna pipe. The whole village was in trance. Abu Zatar, who had never taken a day's vacation in his life, closed the store and rounded up his family. As they were leaving, his wife stopped Fadma from crossing the threshold and then locked the door without bothering to say goodbye. It was the kind of petty cruelty Fadma had grown accustomed to. But alone in the house, it seemed to penetrate to the very core of her dilemma. In the past, she would have accepted her lot and climbed to the roof where she worked among the herbs drying for Zatar. She had always taken solace in handling the leaves and flowers of the thyme plant known to the ancient Greeks for stimulating inner strength and courage. However, not even a herbaceous recipe laced with the magic properties of hemp could heal such a troubled soul. She was afraid of leaving the life she knew no matter how often she was mistreated. At the same time, the possibility of a better life, however faint, made her present situation unbearable. Her mind was a churning water wheel in motion. As soon as her brother and his family were out of sight, she adjusted her scarf and unceremoniously climbed out a back window. In the West, since the rise of Daesh or Islamic State, the stories about women in the region have led to the perception that Middle Eastern women are downtrodden. Still in society, and as well as in my own family, there is a history of women's activism and the refusal to end up the victims of patriarchy. There is also one non-human character, a pig. I have some understanding of the Middle East, but I had absolutely no knowledge of pigs. So I monitored a pregnant one at a city farm in London and delved into pig psychology with prize-winning show pig owners Sharon and David Groves. From my research, it's easy for me to believe that like other characters in the novel, the pig remembers. Much of Mother of All Pigs is about memory and regret and opportunity during bleak times. In fiction as in life, the journey from ignorance to knowledge is rarely straightforward. Inside the tent, she expected someone to appear. When nobody did, she sat down and squinted into the dark corners before blurting out her innermost fears. I am to marry a man who I'm told is good, but my sister, his first wife, is already in her grave. Shouldn't I stay where I am? Gathering a small heap of pebbles and bones on the rug beside her, she thoroughly examined each one, running her fingers over their pitted surfaces, 
feeling their weight and shape. Then, in cupped hands, she shook them like dice and threw them. They fell clattering to the ground against the noise of the wind and the rain outside. From one angle, the pebbles and bones appeared to form a question mark. From another, a broken line of mountains in the shape of a heavily pregnant woman. It was not the answer Fadma expected, but it was the one she deserved. When she climbed out the window, the decision had been made. She would go because she wanted to, and leave if it turned bad, an act that would result in the irrevocable dishonoring of her family and her own death for sure. At least she might get to experience a life that would be truly her own, and any power she exerted over it would be better than the existence forced upon her. Fadma marveled how things of the heart could be decided in a moment.